Good morning. Well, I came out to start working up my garden today, and it's pretty difficult not to unearth today's topic with each shovelful. Today's topic is earthworms. Well, Mr. Blumberg, I believe you are talking about those shiny, pinkish, tubular, squiggly little forms of life. <laughs> and good day to you all. Why, I am as happy as a maggot at a gut festival to be back with you for this day. Well, I gotta say, earthworms are interesting little creatures. They're called invertebrates because they've got no backbone. Kind of like a few people I've known in my lifetime. But I'm getting off topic now. So the worms, they have no arms, no legs, and no eyes. You know, scientists estimate that there are between 2,500 and 6,000 different species of earthworms in the world. 200 of them are in the good old U.S. of A. Now, worms need food, moisture, oxygen, and a favorable temperature in order to survive. And it's been estimated that in one little acre of land, there can be more than a million earthworms. The three most common types of earthworms that we find in our area are the nightcrawler, those that surface after dark, and they're larger, the angleworm, which is great fishing bait, and finally the rainworm, those that come up out of the waterlogged soil after a storm. Well, Mr. Blumberg, those three worms you mentioned, why, they're just little itty-bitty things compared to the biggest worm that was ever found. Down in the tropic areas of South Africa, well, they got some monster worms down there. One was 22 feet long. And it's not uncommon to find worms a couple of feet long, but here in the United States of America, most worms are anywhere from, oh, half an inch up to seven or eight inches. The bigger ones being those night crawlers that he mentioned a moment ago. Unlike humans, which are warm-blooded, worms are cold-blooded. That means their body temperature varies with the environment they are in. So where humans have a fairly constant 98.6 temperature, worms' temperature can go up or down depending on the temperature of the soil or the ground that they are on. Baby worms hatch from a small cocoon, smaller than a grain of rice, that the mother worm has laid. And inside each cocoon, there are anywhere from five to 20 babies. Now, as Mr. Barlow told you a minute ago, worms have no eyes, but they can sense light with special receptors that they have on their body. And when they sense that light, they crawl away from it, especially sunlight. For in that sunlight, without enough moisture, a worm could die. Oh yes, that sun can get mighty hot. Oh, so those little worms, yeah, they, they crawl away. And they dig themselves down into that subsoil and they mix it with the topsoil, which is good for the gardens. Now while they're doing that, their body can secrete or give off this kind of slime. And it helps them crawl through, but that slime also contains something called nitrogen. And that nitrogen is good for your garden. So those worms are actually really helpful in a garden setting. We mentioned earlier that two of the needs of an earthworm are food and oxygen. Well, an earthworm's food is usually leaves and soil. And as for the oxygen, because they don't have lungs, they breathe through their skin. An earthworm's lifespan is usually from one to two years, but they have been known to live up to eight to 10 years. Well, Mr. Blumberg, I think right now is a good time to mention that a worm's digestive system is a very interesting thing. It's basically a, a straight tube that goes from the mouth end of the worm at the front end of the body to the opposite end. Yes, that's a worm's digestive system. Well, there is one last thing that I'd like to talk about, if it's okay with you, Mr. Blumberg. Okay. The age-old question. If you cut a worm in half, does it become two worms? Well, boys and girls, that just ain't so. Now, if you cut a worm in half, and it's far enough down from the head so that the end with the head still has the vital organs, 
then it's possible that that worm can survive and regenerate or regrow a tail end. But that tail end, that ain't good for nothing anymore except fishing bait. <laughs> well, I gotta tell you I'm so happy I stopped in today. Why, this has made me as happy as a day with sunshine on the desert sand. It was good to see you again. And I understand that you are just about done with school. So I bid you a, a good luck and a, and a enjoy the summer and farewell. And thank you, Mr. Barlow, for joining us today. It's always a great pleasure. And as for you, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson on earthworms. Have a great day.